Solder paste may be applied to the printed circuit board by dispensing or stencil printing. A 6 thou or 8 thou metal stencil is aligned with the surface mount pads and the solder paste is forced through the apertures using a squeegee blade. The angle and the type of the blade will be selected depending on the application. After printing, components are placed into the solder paste. Due to its tacky nature, the paste holds the components during assembly. Ball grid array devices are placed during the final placement operation when other fine pitch parts are positioned into the solder paste. Accurate placement may be achieved optically with alignment of the balls and the pad locations. Optical inspection on the placement system may also check for missing ball terminations. Heat is then applied to reflow the paste between 215 to 225 degrees C to form the bond between the circuit pads and the component terminations. Reflow of the solder paste may be conducted by convection, infrared or vapor phase reflow. During reflow soldering the solder paste becomes a liquid. When the BGA features eutectic solder balls these balls also form part of the joint. If high temperature balls or columns are used they do not collapse during reflow. Depending on product or company policy cleaning may be conducted at this stage. Either solvent, aqueous or semi-aqueous processes may be used to remove flux residues left from the solder paste. In the case of double-sided reflow assembly, the board is inverted to allow screen printing, placement and reflow to be repeated. The introduction of pin and hole reflow can eliminate hand and wave soldering and allow reflow of surface mount components on both sides of the board. In this case, solder paste is stencil printed onto the second side of the board, printing paste onto the pads and over the through holes. Prior to surface mount placement, through hole components can be inserted into the through holes. During reflow, both surface mount and through hole leads will be soldered in one operation. Traditional double sided reflow is very common in modern assembly operations. As we have already seen, solder paste is printed onto the second side of the board. Components are placed into the solder paste, which holds the parts in position. Heat is then applied, and the solder paste reflows. If conventional components are to be fitted, then the chips will be held by adhesive, which is either dispensed, printed, or pin transferred onto the board. Components are then placed onto the adhesive prior to the curing stage between 110 to 125 degrees C. The board is then inverted for possible assembly of conventional leaded parts. The conventional component assembly may be conducted manually or automatically and will depend on the volume of components. Generally speaking, if automatic assembly is used, the conventional components are assembled before adhesive application, component placement and curing. Wave soldering consists of flux application, preheating and solder wave contact. Flux may be applied by foam, dip or spray. Spray fluxing is becoming the most common method used, with flux applied to the bottom of the board and into the through holes. Flux cleans all metal surfaces prior to solder contact. Preheating is achieved by convection and radiation, with infrared being the most common method used to raise the board temperature to over 100 degrees C. Preheating activates the flux evaporates the solvent in the flux and reduces the difference in temperature between the board and the solder. Finally, the board is passed through a dual wave soldering process.
to solder both conventional and bottom side surface mount components. Depending on company policy, boards may now pass through a further cleaning process. Inspection is often conducted after wave soldering. It is however recommended that inspection points are required at each stage of the process. Rework and repair is conducted where necessary using specialized tools. It also requires suitably trained staff. Rework may be conducted earlier in the process if company quality standards are not achieved or components fail. In the case of nickel pads, care should be taken not to leave the nickel exposed. In-circuit test may be applied at this stage to confirm the electrical integrity of the products. In some cases, an electrical in-circuit test is also performed after the first reflow soldering operation. A separate test point should be used on surface mount parts to eliminate the probe making the connection by forcing contacts together. 